Well, a very good afternoon and welcome to another edition of KTN Business Today. My name is Abi Agina. Trusting that you had a lovely weekend, it's time to take a look at the latest from the world of business for this week. And we'll be having an interesting conversation here on the program today about corporate governance. We'll be having a panel of guests to share with us some interesting developments around this. And this, I guess, from the ICPSK. We'll be definitely looking forward to that particular conversation coming up in a short while. Other than that, we'll be talking matters to do with e-commerce and some interesting developments around this. I'll be hosting Alphonse Juma, who is also with us here in studio this afternoon. First things first, let's start you off with a look at how the markets are looking like on this Monday of this month of April. Let's take a look at uh, the shilling, how it's performing against the US dollar. Well, today the shilling is trading at 100.90, buying, selling at 101. Well, the dollar has remained relatively stable in the last few weeks, so some good signs there, especially coming through from the fact that uh, we are seeing a lot of uh, dollar inflows coming through, thankfully, to matters to do with tourism. Well, the sterling pound is trading at 141.88 buying, selling at 142.20, whereas the euro is trading at 123.77 and uh, selling at 124.05. Well, those two currencies also remained very, very stable for the last few weeks. Let's take a look at the NSE performance, how the markets closed on Friday. Well, turnover stood at 2.8 billion. Whereas the shares traded was at 84 million shares. The NSE 20 share index was at 3,820.81 points. And the bonds market did extremely well last week. It closed off at 7.3 billion worth of bonds traded. Let's turn attention now to the most active counters for this week. We have Safaricom closing in at 5.83 million shares. Equity Bank coming in second, just under 2.4 million. Barclays Bank Kenya also doing well. It's at 2.26 million. Mumia's Sugar moving about 1 million worth of shares. Let's turn attention to the, gain, to the gainers for this particular day of the week. We have Flame Tree Group. It's up 5.68%. And the share price at four shillings and 65 cents. Home Africa also doing pretty well in trading. The stock is at up 4.76%, share price at a shilling and 10 cents. Well, it still continues to uh, be trading at a rather subdued uh, valuation. Of course, this is pegged on different market fundamentals. Williamson T also doing well in trading, they are at 4.52. Share price at 162 shillings. With Jimmy Supermarkets also making some strong comeback. The stock is trading up by 4.4%. Share price at 2 shillings and 35 cents. Let's take a look at the losing counters. We have Samia Africa. The stock is down 8.51%. Kenya Airways also not doing well in trading today. A lot of interest really in this particular stock. As much as it's on the losing counters, we've seen some uh, impressive uh, upswings on that particular stock as it continues to defy market expectations. Well, Mumia's sugar down by 4.76, TPS Serena closing off 4.48. Well, that's a quick look at the markets as of this Monday. And of course, more info will be coming through in our subsequent bulletins. Well, let's start off the show now with some stories and the government has begun the process of implementing a crude oil pipeline project at Lokicha area in Turkana County by lobbying with the five county governments to persuade their communities to give consent for the pipelines to pass through their regions. Cabinet Secretary for Petroleum and Mining, John Munez, is optimistic that the crude oil pipeline will be in place in three years' time. We are doing extensive exploration of uh, uh, oil and gas, uh, what we call the hydrocarbons, in, uh, in Turkana, in the, in the northern part of Kenya. Samburu has a potential. And I was coming to engage the governor so that we start expanding the exploration uh, to this county. I know this county, in the area of, uh, of petroleum and gas, is going to be one of the key countries we want to put attention. The pipeline, the crude pipeline, which is from Lokichar to Lamu, will pass through five counties. And Samburu is one of those counties. So we need to engage uh, the communities there. 
for them to protect the pipeline. We will start engaging communities, we will look for their consent so that they allow us, they allow our country uh, in the next three years uh, pipe uh, the crude oil uh, from, from Rocky Church to the port of Lamb. Well, indeed, some progress there on Mata's oil. And national campaign against drug abuse, NACADA, has closed down several premises across Embu County for non-compliance of stipulated government liquor-driven policy. During the crackdown that was done by multi-agency teams that comprise of officers from the Ministry of Interior and Coordination of National Government, NACADA, the Kenya Bureau of Standards, Kenya Revenue Authority, and the Anti-Counterfeit Agency, the National Police Service and Public Health, the teams visited several premises, including manufacturers, distributors, and alcoholic drink outlets across the county. In some of the areas visited within Embu Town, hygiene of a majority of the local bars was wanting, and also there was massive abuse of the bar and restaurant license as proprietors are issued with the license, yet they do not have an operational restaurant and are therefore left selling alcohol during the day. Well, to now to a story that has continued to dominate headlines throughout last week to this week. Leaders from Tana River County want the ban on charcoal and timber business to remain enforced. While Tana River says that the ban is saying saving their indigenous trees, residents of Kirinyaga think the ban is punitive and unfair. It is nearly two months since the government declared a three-month moratorium on logging, the effect of which saw businesses such as charcoal burning and timber production slowing down. Leaders in Tana River County are still big on the anti-logging campaign. Tana River ni moja ya zile county ziliruhusiwa kuchoma makaa ya madhenge. Lakini mulileta wageni kutoka nje kuja kukata makaa na kuchoma na kuuza. Sasa hao wageni mulileta walikuwa hawakati madhenge wanakata miti asili. In Kirinyaga County, conservationists are blaming the government for not considering those who for a long time and they are living through forest activities. Many here feel that they are being punished for nothing. We have been managing our forest. We have supported the environment without letting anything be destroyed. Somebody wakes up in the morning and says that uh, that mwananchi, that mama who depends on firewood for cooking, will not go to the forest to collect firewood. And uh, because we want to conserve, is a total disappointment. Kangaita Forest in Kerigoya is one of the few forests in the country that are well maintained and conserved. Before the moratorium, residents would collect firewood and carry on with other activities, making sure that not a single indigenous tree was cut. Wakuna vire, musitu itawachu wa hivo, tukisema watu atoke. Munasema ata community, ata nani atoke. Kwa hivo, diotuweke hii musitu yetu, lazima kuna wala wataigia, which is most likely mahoteli taeda huko. Hiyo hoteli haitakuwa ya huyu kijana mdogo mdogo. Hiyo hoteli haitakuwa ya wanjiko. Hiyo hoteli itakuwa ya mabonyenye. Wale watakuwa wanajenga ile anapewa hoteli, anapewa 1000 acres ndio aweke wanyama wake huko. Several groups have been collaborating to protect this forest. They feel there is need for the government and the site at large to plant more eucalyptus trees far away from river banks and water towers in order to protect the forest. We find Brungam being of value because it's acting as a buffer. It is reducing a lot of pressure to our natural forests. Although they are not opposed to the ongoing efforts to save the forest, they feel the moratorium is unnecessary and is punitive even to those who follow the law. Shadrach Niti, KT News. Well, lots and lots of questions emerging out of this policy that seeks to one side improve the tree cover across the country. On the other side, there's the commercial side of it. We'll be speaking to Kevin Ogutu, who is in Kisumu, to get an update on this developing story later on. But to some more news, the Federation of Kenya Employers held a seminar with Chinese employers based in Kenya to sensitize them on the Kenyan working culture and labor laws. FKE Executive Director Jacqueline Mugo met officials from the Kenya Overseas Chinese Corporation 
<coughs> I beg your pardon, and signed a memorandum of understanding to partner with COCA and empower them to become compliant with Kenyan labor standards. Previously, foreign employers have been found on the wrong side of the law for lacking proper paperwork to facilitate their business operation, an issue FKE feels will now be a thing of the past. FKE equally partners with the International Employee Global Networks, dealing with over 150 nations. This is a two-way arrangement so that even as uh, Kenyan employers and workers and business people, we are able to welcome and integrate uh, the Chinese business community into, into the, the Kenyan environment. We have, under this partnership, made a lot of progress. We've done trainings on various topics, the labor laws, what are the requirements on occupational health and safety, what are the requirements on labor relations, how do you deal with unions, what are the terms and conditions of service that are expected? Because of the cultural difference and also the business environment is different from China. So we believe uh, and also what we find, uh, there are a lot of challenges. Take example, uh, now we have this uh, immigration, just like what we have trained today. We, we need to know more about the work permit and then to, <clears throat> to, to work here legally, this first. The, because that is a fundamental of the doing responsible business in Africa. Kenya employers have done a very good job in, in reaching out and assisting the companies in doing better business and more business because the Chinese companies are really contributing to the society both when it comes to creating local jobs and to, to support the economic growth. Well, like I mentioned it to you earlier, we now want to cross over to Kisumu County where we have Kevin Ogutu, our reporter based in that region. Well, good afternoon, Ogutu. We are just keen to find out what is the state of affairs in Kisumu County when it comes to the ban on logging and how has it affected the timber yards within Kisumu? A very good afternoon, Abi. Uh, right here, I'm at uh, Paso Timber Yard in Kisumu along uh, Kisumu uh, Kakamega Highway. And uh, what I have uh, got from uh, businessmen and women in timber business in Kisumu is that it has been quite a very difficult time for them uh, following the February ban on logging, uh, which was uh, occasioned by uh, deforestation and uh, alarm raised around that. Uh, so. Um, most of them told me that they actually used to get the timber they would sell uh, from Wasingishu County and most, but more, more particularly uh, in uh, Eldoret and Marakwet, uh, Elgeo Marakwet areas. And uh, just to get it from the horse's mouth, uh, I will be introducing uh, one of the business uh, people here uh, to paint a picture on what the business environment uh, has been so far. Uh, welcome uh, to Katie and Business. Uh, how are you feeling as a, a business woman in Timba? Kwa sasa hatusiki vizuri sana. Yeah. Kwa majina naitwa Maximila Oselu. Uh, biashara ambayo imerudi chini sana kwa vile walifunga forest. Sasa tuwezi pata mbao. Kuuza mbao ni shida. Mbao haiingi, mbao haikuji. Sasa bei ambayo pia wakileta, mbao bei ambayo inashoot. Sasa hakuna vile tunapata biashara imerudi chini sana. Kwa, kwa hivyo wale ambao walikuwa na waletea hawaleti tena ama wamepunguza na wamepunguza kuleta hakuna vile inaweza fika jua vile walikuwa wamefunga kuna wenye wako na logs wameshapasua sasa hakuna vile wanaweza leta lakini wenye wana manage na wanaleta hakuna wanaleta lakini wanaleta na bei ya juu sana kwa hivyo kwa kifupi uh, utasemaje vile bei imeongezeka unaweza kupatia example futi moja tulikuwa tunanunua kwa kiasi hichi cha pesa akisha baadaye baada ya marufuku ya serikali ikaongezeka kwa kiasi hiki uh, kwa kitambo let's say like 4 by 2 tulikuwa tunanunua kwa 32 per futi kwa saa hii imepanda imepanda hadi 50 shillings sasa ukielezea customer vile imepanda hawaelewi lakini ni vile ambao msituni ilikuwa imefunga ndio maana ilikuwa imepanda. Kwa hivyo wale ambao walikuwa wanafanya kazi hapa kwako wako tu ama kuna wale ambao ilibidi waende nyumbani kwa sababu ya kupungua kwa biashara. Kwa vile biashara imepungua ilibidi tupunguze wafanyikazi. Jua kuna pesa 
kazi iko chini mali pia kuna. Sasa hakuna vile utalipa mfanyikazi kama hakuna kazi. Inabidi unapu, unapunguza wafanyikazi unabaki na wachache. Okay, asante sana Max Miller. Uh, Abi that's Max Miller one of the uh, business uh, ladies here in Kisumu uh, trying to elaborate how the situation is following uh, the government uh, February ban on logging. Back to you Abi in studio. Well, many thanks, uh, Kevin. But just before we let you go, for in brief, perhaps uh, how severe is the issue in Kisumu from the spot checks you've been able to do, perhaps, in some of the timber yards? Are they well stocked or they're understocked or business continues as usual? Well, uh, a few of the timber yards are... Uh actually close not very many that we could uh, uh, see but for uh, quite a number that we were able to pass by uh, while doing the spot check they are selling uh, a bit of old stock uh, though we have uh, quite a few uh, be, uh, look, new looking timber but uh, quite a majority of what is in stock which is being sold is uh, the old stock uh, so this uh, clearly indicates that uh, it's quite a challenge and when you look at the stocking actually uh, there's actually nothing much because uh, though this is a, quite a busy one uh, called Assembo Timber Yard in uh, Kisumu and when you look uh, right, like right now uh, it's not even uh, three quarters full uh, so observant people could see, any observant person could see that uh, the stock has actually uh, had a considerable decline. Uh, back to you, Abby. Well, many thanks there, Kevin. A good to our reporter based in Kisumu. Just painting for us the picture of how this ban has affected some of the businesses that are in the timber business for that matter. And indeed, it is a conversation that will continue and will definitely be staying on top of this as we move along. Well, let's take you to some more stories now. And different alcohol industries are diving into the new innovation of providing variety of alcohol tests to extend the growth in value chain that brings impact to the Kenyan economy. In today's world, millennials value experience, authenticity, and thus have an increased interest in doing trial and error. This then keeps brewers on toes on staying relevant to their huge target market. KTN's Julia Wino reports. The new generation are known to value convenience, however lack a lot of confidence in making such like cocktails at home. This then leads them to attend mixology classes in bars in which they can mix their own cocktails according to their own preferences. We also do research to understand what are the shifts that are happening within the market. We actively listen to our consumers to understand what's really changing. And we also very much observe their styles. What is it that they are enjoying more of? Uh, what are their tastes and preferences looking like? And with that, we are consistently building a pipeline of ideas, which we then check with consumers to understand how excited are they about them. The alcohol industry is seen to try new possible varieties of flavors to increase the customer base majorly. Women are not the target market when it comes to pure alcoholic drinks, and so manufacturers are forced to dig for ideas in which they could improve the taste of traditional alcoholic beverages, which will attract millennials at large. It creates a lot of value for a country and for an individual, but we just need to be aware of how to do that responsibly, and that's why we are not pulling any stop. We are working both for the top line and also for the responsibility part of it to ensure that we deliver this to everybody along the chain. Herbal flavors are becoming very popular in the beverage industry and are being added to the drinks, with ginger being the dominant flavor. When it comes to spirits, berries rule the day. Raspberries give a mouth-watering taste feeling. Its flavor is delicate, sweet, and well-known by everybody. Furthermore, most of the people relate this flavor with the summer. If we feel that government has more visibility on which manufacturing and they can be able to tax you based on the volume that you're producing, which I think is a very good thing to do. In a state government, the fast-growing liquor market leads to an increase in the inflow of funds, creating job opportunities for young people and a rise in the country's economy. Julie Owino, KTN News.